The next thing we need to understand is uh, is the definition of trim and stability. And uh, to understand that, we're actually going to look at four pictures here. Uh, imagine that I have a ball, and uh, and it's sitting in four different environments here. The first one is that ball is sitting in a bowl. Okay. Uh, the next one is that that ball is just on a, a flat counter. Uh, the next one is that that ball is sitting on an upside down bowl or a hill. And uh, finally, uh, a ball is sitting on a slope that might look something like this. Okay, so uh, the word trim, um, uh, the word trim simply means that uh, that the summation of forces and the summation of moments about each of the axes is equal to zero, okay? That is, uh, another word for this is that the aircraft is in equilibrium, okay? So that's another word that uh, you might hear out there, equilibrium. Okay, so, so it's in uh, equilibrium. And uh, and uh, so that simply means that the forces are balanced. Now, if you look at uh, this example of, of the ball in each of these cases, the forces are perfectly balanced. That, that ball can be in some stationary position there. The forces are uh, all summed to zero. Uh, it's all sitting in this trim state. And uh, so, so the forces in every direction sum to zero, and the moments actually about each of the axes on the ball also sum to zero, okay? Uh, so, that, so we would say that the ball is in a trim state. Uh, the second uh, word here is stability. So stability is the tendency of that ball or the object to return to its trim state uh, when there is a disturbance. So let's look at the, the top example here, the ball in the bowl here for just a minute. Uh, if we were to disturb this ball and, uh, and, and you know, just, just kind of jiggle the bowl or something or, or the ball uh, and have it move off of, that, uh, off of that trim state, you can easily see that that ball would return back to the trim state. Uh, and so we would say that that's stable, okay? Uh, now, the ball on the on the flat table here, if we were to perturb that, it actually uh, would not necessarily return to the previous trim state, but it may find a new trim state, right? If we, uh, if we moved that a little bit or perturbed it, um, it doesn't have this tendency to return to the original location. Uh, it simply, uh, it, there's nothing pushing it towards that location or away from that location, okay? Uh, and then uh, the next one here, is the ball on the upside down bowl. Um, if we were to perturb that, then obviously that ball would have a tendency to move away from that trim point. Uh, so we would actually call that unstable. Let me uh, label these here. So this is uh, stable. Uh, this case here we call neutrally stable with the table. Um, we call this, this uh, case unstable. If we were to perturb that ball, it would not return to that trim state. And, uh, and then uh, finally, um, this last one is also a, a stable condition, uh, but it's kind of conditionally stable. So uh, you can see that if, if we get a small perturbation here in that ball, uh, you know, if we bump that a little bit, then it will return to that trim point. But if we bump it too much, if we get too large of a disturbance, then, uh, then it will uh, pass this point and uh, become unstable and move away from that uh, from that trim point. Okay, so so trim is simply that the the summation of forces and moments uh, are equal to zero, and uh, stability is um, is the tendency of that object to return to uh, to trim. So I'm just going to write that down: tendency to return to trim or back to that original location. Okay, so um, so we're gonna uh, see uh, examples of, of each of these cases as we look at these, uh, of the aircraft and, and look at what trim and stability means on an aircraft. So let's start with trim for just a moment. Uh, for an aircraft to be trim, uh, that means that the, the sum of the forces 
uh, and I've, I've drawn this in vector form because there are three of them, right? We have a force along the x-axis, force along the y, and a force along the z. That means that the, the sum of the forces has to equal zero. So, uh, for example, in the x-direction, mostly we have, uh, we'll talk about drag, um, that's, uh, that's pulling the aircraft back, and then we usually have engines uh, that are providing thrust uh, in, in the direction of X or closely, uh, you know, closely aligned with X. And uh, so basically, that means that the thrust has to be equal to the drag, right? So uh, if those are equal, then, then we might have uh, equilibrium along the X axis. Now, in the Y direction, if our aircraft is symmetric and, uh, and, is, and doesn't have any side slip velocity, uh, meaning that it's not moving to the side, then, uh, then the forces along the y-axis are basically going to be uh, or summed to zero as well. And then in the z-direction, uh, if we're in steady level flight, then basically we have the weight work, uh, acting down, we'll have lift acting up, and so basically this says that the weight has to be equal to the lift, right? So, uh, so when, when that's true, when thrust equals drag, we don't have any side slip and, and weight is equal to lift, then basically we've satisfied uh, the, the, the summation of the forces is equal to zero. Now let's look at the summation of moments. Uh, that means that the rolling moment uh, or the aerodynamics that would, um, would tend to roll the aircraft have to sum to zero. Uh, and, and if our aircraft is symmetric and we don't have our ailerons deflected out here, then, uh, or and we don't have our rudder deflected, then basically our rolling moment is probably going to be equal to zero. Uh, same with our pitching moment about the y-axis. If our elevator uh, is set to the the correct deflection back here, so that um, so that our moments about the y-axis equals zero, then then uh, we are trim in pitch. And then finally, about the z-axis, uh, as long as our our rudder is not deflected in this example here, then uh, basically we would have uh, uh, we'd be trim about the z-axis. Now we're going to be looking. I've I've simplified a lot of things in my discussion here. We're going to be looking at this in more detail uh, because these forces and moments uh, like lift and drag, for example, are not always aligned directly with the X or Z axes. Uh, and, and so we'll learn about that later. But in general, I'm just trying to get you to understand that uh, the forces have to be balanced on this. The moments have to be balanced all about the center of gravity. And by the way, we usually place this coordinate system at the center of gravity of the aircraft. And so if the forces and moments are uh, summed to zero about the center of gravity, then that means that the center of gravity is going to stay um, uh, headed in the same direction, will not be rotating, and so we call that a trim state. Um, okay, now stability is is uh, is a little bit more interesting. Uh, let's talk about the the tendency of this aircraft if it gets a disturbance along the x-axis or y or z-axis uh, to return to its trim state. So let's start with x first. Um, so, so again, if we say that, that thrust is basically aligned in the x-direction and drag is acting out the back here, then, um, then thrust is equal to drag. Now let's, let's, uh, say that the aircraft gets some disturbance and somehow starts to speed up, right? So it's going a little bit faster, uh, than that trim state. Uh, well, as we increase our velocity, our drag actually increases. Drag is generally proportional to velocity squared. So, so, as, uh, so as we, in fact, maybe I'll just plot that over here. Uh, as a function of velocity, uh, our drag is, is, uh, gonna, is gonna go up, okay? Um, so uh, now the thrust, on the other hand, um, most, um, uh, most propulsion systems actually decrease if we if we leave the throttle setting the same so the pilot hasn't touched anything here the throttle setting is is the same then the thrust actually decreases with velocity and so we're sitting here at this point where uh, thrust is uh, equal to drag and uh, so if if we get some disturbance in uh, in velocity and and move over in this direction then our drag is going to increase and our thrust is going to decrease. And so what happens then is that has a tendency, uh, because we have higher drag and less thrust, that has a tendency to slow the aircraft back down to that trim point. Likewise, if the aircraft slowed down a little bit uh, from some disturbance, then, uh, then our drag would decrease and our thrust would increase and naturally speed the aircraft back up to this trim point. So this is just an example 
uh, along the x-axis that uh, usually we don't have to worry about trimming, or excuse me, about an aircraft being stable in the x direction. And you can actually go through similar arguments for the y and z axes, which we won't do here, but, uh, but usually you don't have to worry about an aircraft being stable in translational uh, in its uh, in its translational velocity along each of these axes what we're primarily concerned with for aircraft stability is that the aircraft is not going to rotate about or, or is, is uh, stable in rotation about each of these axes okay so uh, so in that uh, let's talk about rotation here for just a moment let's say that the uh, that the aircraft gets a disturbance in pitch and uh, and rotates its its nose rotates up about the y axis. Uh, what we want is for the aircraft to naturally, uh, through its aerodynamics, naturally create a nose down pitching moment. To uh, if it if it is at a higher angle of attack, uh, then then uh, it will naturally create a nose down pitching moment that will return uh, the nose directing in the you know the direction of of that uh, when it was in that trim state. And likewise, if it got disturbed and the nose pointed down uh, at a lower angle of attack, then the aerodynamics would naturally act to pull the nose back up um, in a stable uh, position here. So um, so uh, that's what we're going to be talking about. That's what we're mainly concerned about in uh, when we discuss aircraft stability is the, the rotation about these axes, the translation along the axes, is usually not a concern. Most aircraft are stable in the translation along the axes, but in the rotation about the axes, that's what we are primarily uh, concerned about here. Now, I want to give one more example uh, about stability, and uh, that is that you've probably tried to balance a, uh, a broom on its end before. So I'm just going to draw a broom here. Uh, and uh, And let's say that we have a broom here and we uh, we pin it, we pinch it at this point here. We're just going to pin it uh, like that. Um, and then and then uh, disturb that broom, you know, to the right or left. We see that that will just uh, eventually return back to pointing uh, straight down, you know, that, that will return back to this trim state. Um, and so we would call this uh, stable. Um, but if we try to balance that broom upside down, so here's our broom and we're balancing it on our nose or, or our hand or something, uh, but we're, we're basically pinning this point, and uh, then we can get it to be in some, uh, in some trim state, but it's not stable, and, and so we have to actively work to keep it in that trim state, and uh, obviously if we lose our concentration, then that uh, broom will move away from the trim state without us even trying, right? So, um, the the requirement uh, and uh, well I'll get to to another example in, in just a second here but the requirement for an aircraft to be unconditionally stable um, uh, is not real actually we don't have to have aircraft that are completely stable we as humans can actually control systems and autopilots can control an aircraft that is unstable. We'll talk about that more later uh, when we talk about controllability of aircraft and handling qualities of aircraft. But uh, but the aircraft doesn't have to be stable, actually. We as humans can actually control systems that are unstable. Another example is a bicycle. Uh, probably all of you know how to ride a bicycle, and, uh, and that's actually an unstable system. If you were to... Um, uh, just uh, push the bicycle without you on it, you know, you just push it down the road, it won't stay up very long. But somehow when you're riding it, you're able to keep it up. And that's because uh, even though it's an unstable system, we as humans have the ability to control that and, uh, and, and turn it into a controllable system, even though it's unstable. So, so aircraft don't have to be stable. However, um, uh, the the uh, the amount of stability, uh, you know, the controllability of the aircraft is related to how stable these aircraft are, and uh, so we'll talk about that in in more detail. But hopefully, this discussion has helped you understand uh, what, especially what the words trim and uh, stability mean. We'll be talking about those a lot. Uh, first, we're going to be focused on longitudinal stability, and uh, those are those. That's the stability. Basically, if we were to look. 
um, uh, along the, uh, the XZ plane of the aircraft. Most aircraft are symmetric across the XZ plane here. And so we'll be focused on the forces and moments that happen in that plane um, uh, first. And, uh, and then we'll get into lateral trim and stability, uh, which, uh, which affect the rest of them.